Uncle Jesse here. Today we're gonna to be reviewing Simplify 3D version five. Yeah, the long, and I seriously mean long awaited update to this 3D printing slicer. And does anybody review slicers? I don't know, but we're gonna be doing it in today's video. And the big question that we're gonna be trying to get to today is if you're an existing Simplify 3D version four user, should you consider paying that $60 upgrade fee to version five? Or, hear me out now, if you are a brand new user, should you even consider paying the $200 for a license to version five of this slicer? Yeah, I know, that's crazy. And you know what's not crazy? <laughs> Is Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They are the makers of the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro and the Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus. FDM 3D printers that I'm basically gonna be printing everything that you're seeing in today's video directly on these 3D printers. You should hopefully be able to find the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro directly over on Elegoo's website. Fingers crossed it's not sold out. Or over on Amazon, I'll have links to those down below. This thing is crazy quiet and the print quality is just stunning on this. And the soon to be released Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus is just a beast of a 3D printer with a direct drive extruder. The links for those just recently went live, so hopefully that means that they'll officially be for sale in the upcoming days or weeks. I don't really have a go live date for this thing just yet, but check out the links down below if you're interested in picking one of these up. <laughs> and again, thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. This isn't 2015 when 3D printers were costing a thousand plus dollars and they did not have good slicers. There weren't any good slicers available, which is why Simplify 3D was so popular amongst the 3D printing community that was willing to pay. I think at the time it was like 150, 170 dollars. Definitely wasn't $200 for a license of the software. But if you are an existing Simplify 3D version four user, Let's, let's dive into that because I think there is some nuggets of hope in this new update of the slicer that I'm really enjoying. And then there's also a good number of bugs that need to be dealt with. So let's jump into Simplify 3D and check out and see what this new update can do. First off, it's got a new layout and a, it's, it's always had a really nice clean look and aesthetic to it. And this time they've added a dark mode, which is what I'm rocking at the moment. It does have an issue if you're using a MacBook and your MacBook is also set in dark mode. The text overlay just looks really funky at times. So this isn't intended to be a tutorial or how to use this system. I am just gonna be touching on some of the features, the new things that have been added to this and a handful of things that I wish were changed. So here I've got a helmet that I brought in on the build volume of a profile for the Neptune 3 Plus. So the first thing I'm gonna do is need to look at orienting this properly on the build plate. Normally on the right hand side is where they would typically have this menu which is now docked and you can pull out and as well as you can actually undock it entirely and move it around, which I really find nice so that I can position this wherever I'd like it to be. But here I can now, typically like you normally would, I would rotate this so something like uh, negative 30 degrees and it's gonna rotate it around here. They've also down on the very bottom added some new control options. These are quick link options. And some of those, which is a really great uh, addition in this, is a gizmo tool. So again, something that you typically see in most slices they've now finally brought into this. So I can just click and drag on this wheel to align it however I'd like it to be. So here I can drag this down. That looks about how I want it to have it angled. They do not have anything intelligent on this where you could you know, pick a position or it's gonna try and identify a level plane and you click on that like you see in Prusa Slicer or in some of the other slicers that are out there. I wish that was in there. The other thing is you might have noticed that I previously in the rotation menu on the right hand side, I put in a value of negative 30, but as soon as I did anything else in here, it reverted that back to zero. Anytime that you adjust the scaling or adjust the rotation and then change basically anything, it's gonna revert that back. So here I'm gonna change the scale to 90% scale and then I'm gonna adjust the rotation here to 10% and it automatically reset the, the scale back to 100%, even though it's retaining the 90% that I put in there, but it's that initial value has gone back to 100. This is totally screws me up in my process because I will typically bring in multiple files, adjust one of them to try and fit a 3D scan in my head to see what might actually fit, and then I need to know, did I adjust that by 
uh, you know, 5%? Did I adjust that by 25%? Uh, you know, I might do multiple tweaks and that final value is what I need to know and retain so that I can apply that to my other files in the project. So one of the main features and reasons why I continue to use Simplify 3D is its ability to generate supports. So here along the bottom are a whole bunch of shortcuts for the supports that you can go into and create. There is also a menu on the right hand side for an actual support menu, which I'd previously undocked and positioned over here, which will give you more granular details about, uh, is it just gonna be normal supports or from the build plate only? After all of this time, they just have standard supports still. There's no tree supports or anything new funky wise for supports. I honestly thought maybe throughout the past handful of years, they might even have a resin slicer update available coming to this, but no, that's not baked into this either. So just the same typical stuff that we see in the previous version is still here, sadly. So here I can generate automatic supports and then start manually adjusting. Now, one thing that I am absolutely loving with this update is they've added bulk updating options to this. So I can either click on this button here, remove multiple sorts, supports or on the very bottom menu is the same function. But now I can just kind of click in here and drag around and it's gonna automatically remove all of the supports that had generated in the centerpiece of this helmet where I don't actually want any supports to be generated or placed. Now, the other really cool thing is I can also bulk add supports. So here along this edge here, it doesn't have any supports that it's added. So I wanna start clicking and dragging and adding supports along this ridge. And I'm gonna have to clean up this a little bit, but it's so made it easier for me to quickly add in the supports here. So this is again, a great addition. It is a little buggy and a little wonky. I'll try to get some footage of where it just doesn't respond correctly and it goes into like a weird pattern that it tries to assign, but it's a really easy and effective way to precisely paint on supports and be able to visually see exactly where they're gonna be placed and generated on your print. Again, this is fantastic for things like helmets and other cosplay files that you might be trying to slice and print where you wanna very, again, specifically place those supports. Also, you notice here on the very front, it's still not that intelligent, so you have to go back through and recheck some of these things where it did not place it on the very front of that little piece that's sticking out there. Now, I wish I could say there wasn't, you know, even bugs with just this basic functionality of adding the supports here, but let's say I just went in and added these supports and now I needed to, I don't know, re-rotate this around. Well, it's got the gizmo. I clicked on the gizmo to rotate, but it's still in the support adding mode. So if I try to rotate this, it's also gonna be trying to add supports as I'm clicking around. It's just, doesn't feel like they've done a whole heck of a lot of testing at all with this for some of the new functionality that they've built into the app. And by the way, if I go back into the add support mode from the gizmo, it still leaves the gizmo up. It's like, it's it's not intelligent to know that, hey, I'm clicking on one function, disable the prior function so that I can just focus on the new function that I've clicked on. It's just, I don't know, it's some basic functionality that I thought would have been there. And since I did come from version four of Simplify 3D, it did offer me the option to transfer over all of my profiles. So I am able to still utilize those, which was great that it did migrate those over and I can still continue to use version four at the same time as version five. However, there is a new licensing structure with the version five release that wasn't entirely clear when it first released there that a lot of people are not happy about, which is with version four, or you could have two active machines running with your license at one time. This means I could have a laptop here at my studio that has Simplify 3D up and running on it and one at home so that I can independently slice files wherever I'm at and work that way, which was fantastic. Now with version five, you can only have one active machine up and running with that license. So that means if I'm going from building to building, I need to deactivate or log out my other license on my 
other machine before I can use it on this new one. So it's just a few extra steps that people are gonna have to take if they're working in multiple locations or from multiple machines. So one of the other main reasons why I continue to use Simplify 3D over other slicers is just how well it performs at slicing. I mean, it's insanely fast compared to some of the other slicers. So let's put that to the test here with version five and see how this stacks up against the latest versions of Prusa Slicer, Cura, and Lychee. So here in Simplify 3D version five, I'm gonna prepare this Magai Beer Dragon. This is a notoriously complex file and we're gonna see how long this actually takes to process. And take a look at these slicing times. Simplify 3D is still the fastest out of all of the slicers that I've, you know, with this very basic test using the exact same basic settings of layer height, infill, infill pattern, walls, uh, speed, print speed, no supports or anything like that, no rafts. Basically trying to replicate the same settings across all of the slicers. Simplify 3D came in at 8.5 seconds Cura at 14.2 seconds, honestly very impressed and surprised by that. I still find Cura so god awful and clunky to play around with. It's just, it's painful to work with. Just it's the navigation and the controls. It's just, it's not fun and yeah, intuitive. Uh, Prusa Slicer, bravo, 12.4 seconds. That's like amazing. I need to start using that more. And we have Lychee Slicer on the FDM side. I love you guys, Lychee team, but a minute and seven seconds is, uh, that's, a, that's not great. That's not great. <laughs> So I also wanted to just do a basic comparison of different prints across the different slicers. So I just decided to use a Benchy, easiest thing possible to print and relatively quick. So I went with version four of Simplify 3D. Uh, this one here, the estimate was one hour and 10 minutes. It actually took one hour and 25 minutes here to print. And again, using the exact same settings across all these different slicers or attempting to use as close as I possibly can because uh, they're all slightly different with their settings. And the Prusa slicer, Benchy, here came in, uh, the estimate was one hour and 27 minutes, and it actually took one hour and 28 minutes. So that's pretty fantastic to see how close it was with its estimate right off the get-go without any modification there. I also did a Cura Benchy here, which is estimated at 47 minutes with a profile that I have now set up for my Elegoo Neptune 3 printers. And it actually took one hour and one minute to print. I'm honestly very impressed with that. And I obviously went off and sliced a file with version five of Simplify 3D. This was an estimate of 55 minutes and took one hour and three minutes to print. This version five slicer also added adaptive layer height setting, but you can't exactly control it like you can in Cura or Prusa slicer where you can really identify the areas that you want to be refined with those adaptive layers. You could go in and do separate processes within Simplify 3D, which is a whole nother thing in itself to set up, but I mean, it is kind of possible. I did do a Benchy just running the whole thing at an adaptive layer height. That estimate was one hour and 23 minutes and the actual was one hour and 35 minutes. Now, this is going to be a bit controversial, but honestly, out of the results that I'm seeing out of all of these, Cura and Prusa Slicer, the results just aren't as good as what I'm seeing from version four of Simplify 3D or version five of Simplify 3D. I think the sliced files, just how they printed, again, exact same settings. I tried to mimic the, basically the same thing across all the slicers here on the Neptune 3 Pro. And I just feel like they look a little bit better on the Simplify 3D versions. Not that they're bad, it's just they don't look as good. So let's talk about some of the things that I have run off and printed with this new version of the slicer, just so you can see some, again, what some of the things that I've printed. It's again, gonna depend on your printer that you're working with in a combination of the slicer and settings that you're running with. Everything that I'm printing and showing off here, I believe is basically at 0.2 millimeter layer height. I don't think I've, yeah, I didn't print anything at 0.28 for this test here. But this is a cup can holder here by Loot Studios. This took exactly 12 hours to print, which is wild to see here on the Neptune 3 Pro, use some rainbow silk PLA, printed beautifully. I then went off and printed this massive dream helmet. This is Dream's helm from the Sandman Netflix TV show or from the comics even. This is more from the from the TV show and from Netflix. There is still a whole bunch of supports on here. I purposely left these on. I wanted to show how easy they were to remove, but I am honestly having a little bit of a hard time getting some of these to pop off properly. 
there. I don't want to break anything. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. The the bone ones are coming off relatively well there. And using that bulk paint on functionality works so well for this helmet here and the little bone pieces. And yeah, obviously I can wear this as well. It is a little snug, but I can wear it. I then went off and printed the Call of Duty Ghost Mask from Yosh Studios. This was a estimated at 10 hours and 40 minutes and took 11 hours and 12 minutes for it to actually print. This print looks beautiful. It was so clean printed on the Neptune 3 Pro in this bone white PLA. Uh, again, everything was manually supported here, worked and printed just amazing. And you've also heard me talking a lot about actuals versus estimated time. And the reason why I keep bringing that up is in Simplify 3D version five, they now have an area under the speed settings for you to adjust different estimate slicing settings there to give you more accurate uh, estimates and I'm not sure there's there's probably these types of settings in Cura and Prusa Slicer I'm not entirely sure where they are to be honest But uh, I was able to look at the settings on my Elegoo printers here and find the exact settings to plug into that And this juggernaut head after changing the settings there the estimate was 14 hours and 19 minutes and the actual time was 14 hours and 16 minutes for this to print. And again, the print quality on this looks great. And I just need to remove the supports. And this is gonna be part of a larger diorama that I'm working on. And again, this one is from Wicked 3D. What it comes down to is, should you spend your money on this slicer right now? And my answer is no. Hey, so I'm just wrapping up the edit for this video and I wanted to jump back in and change my opinion on the slicer. Originally in this video, I was gonna say, if you are a version four user, consider upgrading and paying the $60. Now, after even more time with the slicer, I would say don't give them any money whatsoever until this is updated again, until there's, we've seen some sort of indication that they're gonna continue to support the slicer and fix some of these core issues that are in the slicer. I would say don't bother updating until that actually happens and that we can see that they're actually gonna be supporting what you're paying for. Stick with Prusa Slicer, stick with Cura if you have to. Uh, try out Lychee Slicer, even though the slicing time was a little bit slower, a lot slower than the other slicers there. There is still a free option and it allows you to do the visual support placement. Honestly, if Prusa Slicer had visual support placement, that would probably push me over to the edge to actually just use that all of the time as my core slicer, but I just need that ability. That's such an important ability for me to be able to go in, precisely see where I'm placing those without having to slice the file, then go back, adjust my supports, then slice it again to see where it is. I, I don't wanna do with all of that. I just need to be able to quickly get in there, support something, slice it, and then get off to printing. Also really happy to see that this version of Simplify 3 finally came out, but it's just kind of lackluster, to be honest. After all this time, I was just really hoping there would be more, that it would be a lot more polished and tested and a lot less bugs that we're seeing. I have no idea when this is gonna be updated again. Uh, I should also mention that this isn't a subscription license. So this is a perpetual license. So I pay the $60 to upgrade to this and I can continue to use this forever and ever and ever until they put out a new version that you have to pay for. When's that's gonna be? I don't know, maybe it's another four or five years. Maybe it's next year. I, I have no idea. I'm assuming it's gonna be sooner rather than later but we'll, uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see how this goes. I'm gonna continue to monkey around with it. Um, I'm also in the process of building out more of my pros files. This, actu this video actually forced me to start using Prusa Slicer more to build out a slicer file that uh, profile and Cura profile that closely mimicked what I have set up in Simplify 3D that I'm gonna be sharing with my Patreon. So if you're interested in more information about my Patreon and my slicer settings, you can find that over in my Patreon. I wanted to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. The slicer is easy to use, but man, that price point is just insane. Of $200 for a new user, do not pay that. Please do not pay that. Go buy another 3D printer, use free slicer options. Do not pay $200 for this slicer 
ever. That's just an absurd price for a slicer in this day and age. The $60 price point it costs to upgrade, I could see that being like the entry price point for everybody. You wanna upgrade, you want a new user, th that's the price point it's at. Not $200, that's just absurd, absolutely absurd. Hey, thanks so much for watching all. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, somewhat of a ramble of a video on Simplify 3D version five. Again, I'm still a fan of Simplify 3D and its ability to quickly slice files and add supports. It's just buggy as hell right now, to be honest. Hey, thanks so much for watching y'all. I'll see you next time.